Well, uh, hey, welcome to Curtis Lake. My name is Ryan. I'm the lead pastor here, and that just means I have the amazing opportunity to serve our congregation as a pastor and to work with a great group of staff and volunteers. And how about this set? Is that not, I mean, that's just so cool. So, uh, I mean, that's just, that's fantastic. So we're glad you're here. If you're our guest today, thank you so much for whatever reason you decided to come to church today. Um, You could, I recognize you could be doing a whole lot of things right now, but you're here. And so I'm just thrilled to death that you're you're here this morning. Uh, You just saw a little promo for a really great ministry that we have here called Celebrate Recovery. And in the back of your uh, study guide here, and if you're our guest today, we gave you this. You're not signed up for a small group. We didn't sign you up some weird magical way as you came in today. Um, But it is just, uh, it's a study guide in a group for a lot of our, uh, most of our adults are in small groups that meet throughout the week that launch this week, but if you're our guest there, you haven't signed up for a group, that's okay, we still love you uh, for the most part. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just messing around. I'm just messing around. And, uh, but you can bring this back with you every week, and you'll see that there's uh, the talk notes that we normally put in the program. They'll still be in the programs, but you can keep these with you. We want you to bring this to your small group. If for some reason, and it's probably a, a really poor reason, you miss church in the next six weeks, um, <laughs> there's like the sermon in three minutes uh, where it says week three review. So if, like, if you're here today and you're like, I just think I want to leave, just turn the page, you can read the overview and uh, you'll be all set. So uh, what's going to take maybe six hours here, uh, you can get in just a few minutes there. But if for some reason you miss it or you sleep between now and your small group, you can go back and review what we actually talked about on Sunday morning and all the fill-ins are in there. And if you're in a small group, I just, you notice on the back, uh, the last page, there's a place for you to put prayer requests for your small group and to be remembering to pray for those people that you're connecting with every week. And then in the front, there's actually a place where you can put people in my small group because I've led small groups for a long time and I don't remember people's names. So this is really for me. So I can know who's in my small group. I've had people in my small group for three years. I still don't know their name. But uh, I'm working on it, I promise. No, I'm just kidding. So, um, uh, but if you'll notice on the back, there's all these different groups that we have here at Curtis Lake that are, that are really going through the heroic study and, uh, and, and some that aren't. But we just want to encourage you to jump into a group if you can. And if you're interested in Celebrate Recovery, it meets on Tuesday evenings. And it really is, if you're going through a difficult spot in life, uh, a hurt, a habit, a hang up, whatever it might be, um, it is a great opportunity to find community, to get together with some people who are walking through um, and just find I'm going to use a church word here, finding victory, you know, finding the ability to win in life and and overcome some obstacles. And uh, they do that really, the Bible says, through the blood of the lamb, which I know it sounds kind of weird, but it just means through Jesus and through our testimony, which is just our story. And so it's a great ministry, and I would encourage you to check it out. And if you don't, if you think, well, he's paid to talk about it and he wants me to go, talk to anybody in that video. We don't pay them anything, <laughs> really. And, uh, and, and trust me, they'll let you know how, how amazing it is. So, and, and a special thank you to all those in leadership and Celebrate Recovery for all you do there as well. So we're launching our series today called Heroic. How many have ever wanted to be a hero? in life. Raise your hand up nice and high. You had dreams of that as a kid. I did. Um, I remember I was in high school, and this is going to be, you know, I'm not a big height person. I don't like heights or roller coasters, but I remember I went to Kings Island, and uh, and Kings Island is in Ohio. It's a theme park, and they had this thing called the Sky Coaster, where they strap you with three people, and they lift you up, and it's this big swing, and you free fall. See this picture here? Hopefully, it's behind me now, Um, and I did that. Yeah, I did that. And uh, I was that annoying teenager who every time I flew, like, they fly you over people, I would yell as loud as I could, I'm Batman! <laughs> we'd, come, we'd come back, I'm Batman! <laughs> and it's just, here it goes. But that was before the new ones where I should have yelled, I'm Batman, you know. But it was, it was, it was back in the older days, you know. But uh, all of us in here, right, we dream of saving the day at some point in our lives. You know, we kind of wake up one morning as a kid and we're like, I really want to do something cool. And uh, it doesn't matter whether you're a, a, a guy or a gal. I just said gal. I never say gal. So I'll say that today because uh, I know girl can be pejorative nowadays. I'm not sure why. But uh, if you're a guy or a gal, it doesn't really matter. We all dream of wanting to make a difference in our lives. I think that's why kids oftentimes dream of, uh, of being doctors and, and teachers, uh, maybe even a lawyer, I guess. Uh, but no, I'm just messing around for our lawyers. You know I'm just teasing you. So uh, we all dream of saving the day, we dream of being a hero. Like I was, I, when I was a kid, I loved to play with Star Wars figures, and I still do, and uh, I loved to 
loved to play Superman. I mean, he was probably my favorite superhero. And um, we kind of go through life, and then all of a sudden something happens, right? Like life happens. We kind of get a little older, and that natural instinct that we have to save the day, it gets like eaten up. <laughs> it gets eaten up by like homework, and it gets eaten up by grades, and then it gets eaten up by a job, and then it gets eaten up by debt. And, and all of a sudden we lose right, that natural instinct that we're born with to save others, to, to, to live our lives, to do something heroic, to do something big. And then all of a sudden we all find ourselves in this place where we just doubt whether we really can make a difference in life. Like we find ourselves with a mortgage or a car payment or bankruptcy. We find ourselves just feeling so pessimistic about life, so hopeless, so overwhelmed, and we think, can I even make a difference? Or maybe you don't find yourself in that situation. You just find yourself with healthy finances and a job and kids and life is going smooth, but it's just going. And the idea of, of having this life that is heroic, that changes somebody else's life, that rescues somebody else, you just, we can't, we're just too busy. And the interesting thing about wondering whether or not we can ever actually make a difference is we live in a world where there are opportunities all around us to be the hero. Like in our world, everywhere we look, everywhere we turn, there are these opportunities to become everyday heroes to people, to live heroically. But sometimes we just aren't there to hear the call. We, we miss too many calls. There's these calls, there's these, these ringings that are taking place, you know. And all of a sudden, we see all these opportunities in our world, but we miss the call. How many of you remember the old Batman show? Remember that old Batman show and the red phone that... The commissioner would like, but meanwhile, at Main Manor, you remember, well, if you don't remember, here's a, look that one. Right, how many times, how many different ways can you answer the bat phone without Batman there, you know, and, uh, and I'll find him, I'll get him, he's, pre I'll get him presently, all these different ways, and then there's the one time where he says, they're just not available, and I love the response, What? Like, bad stuff happens when Batman doesn't answer the phone, you know? The red phone rings, and this is the opportunity to be the hero, and they're not available, right? And then, oh, my goodness, there's all these things. And in our lives, I think that red phone rings a lot. I think as we live out in our world, I think as we, we, we parent, as we are in relationships with our spouses, with our boyfriends, our girlfriends, as we're walking around the hallways of high school and junior high, I think that the, the bat phone, that red phone, is like ringing all the time, but oftentimes we're just not there to answer it. We're not there to answer it because we have too many problems of our own. We're, we're kind of absorbed in it, and we're trying to make it through. We're trying to walk through our own difficulties, and, and I think we have fears, fears that overwhelm us, fears that I, I can't help that person. I can't do that. I can't answer that call, right? It's just, there's just this fear of what happens if they they don't like what I have to say. What happens if they, they think I have ulterior motives to helping? What, what happens if, what happens if? And then we have doubts. We just doubt whether or not we're worth it. We doubt whether or not we really can help somebody. We can make a difference. Their, their problems might be too big or too great. But today what I want to do is I want to talk about somebody who answered the call. I want to look at a character in the Old Testament uh, in the book of 1 Samuel who really is this great example of answering the call. And in 1 Samuel chapter 3, we're introduced to this, this little kid named Samuel. And we're actually told about him a little earlier. If you're kind of new to Bible study, give me about 45 seconds here and I'll catch you up on the context of the story. So there was this woman who couldn't get pregnant and she went to, to where the Israelites would go to offer sacrifices and there was a priest there and she ended up making this promise to God that if she could conceive a child she would dedicate that child to God and she would bring him back to the temple. Now for some of us dads I'd be like that's awesome I dedicate my kids to God drop them off at church never pick them back up. <laughs> that's a sweet deal you know uh, but uh, this was quite a sacrifice and uh and so mom does this, and, and this little boy is, is conceived and born, and she brings him to Eli, who's kind of the, the leader. He's the, the head priest at the time, and he takes Samuel in and begins to care for Samuel and begins to prepare him for a life of ministry. And the Bible says that Samuel was just this, this amazing young man who just grew in his understanding of God. He was always attendant to, to Eli. He, he, was, he was quite the antithesis of Eli's own children who were just obnoxious and extremely problematic. Um, but Samuel was this amazing kid who God was really raising up to do something cool. And in 1 Samuel chapter 3, we see this really interesting 
moment. We see this interesting moment where Samuel gets this unique call at a unique moment, which leads to a unique heroic response. So Samuel in this story in chapter 3 is really this story about this call that he gets, and it's a very unique moment. It's a pivotal moment in the history of Israel, and it's this moment that leads Samuel to live this heroic life because he responds so appropriately. Because what's happening here is Eli's sons, they are a train wreck. Like, they are taking advantage of people. I mean, they're doing things that are R-rated in the temple. Like, we don't want to talk about it in church, you know, because there are minors here. And they were, they were taking bribes. They were doing all kinds of stuff. And, and God is raising up Samuel, believe it or not, to replace Eli and Eli's family. And so there's this very interesting moment in time. And, and I want to kind of pick up the story one night where Samuel's asleep. And uh, Samuel's sleeping, and this is what happens. In 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 4 through 10, it says, Suddenly... The Lord called out, Samuel. How many of that's ever happened to God? Just ring. <laughs> no, that doesn't happen to us most of the time. If it does happen, I'd encourage you to speak to your local health professional. Because um, normally that's not how God speaks to us anymore. I mean, God gave us now scripture, and this is, a, this is the way that God speaks to us first and foremost. And certainly he speaks to us in our hearts. But here's this moment where in, in, in this time frame, I mean, God is speaking out. And, and Samuel says, yes. What is it? Now, what's happening right here is this is a defining moment in Samuel's life. He's just a kid. But this is a moment that is forever going to change him. And we know that because we're kind of reading the story outside of it. But this is this moment where it's going to define who he is. How he responds to this moment, to these circumstances, are going to set the course for the rest of his life. And believe it or not, you and I have these moments, and they might not be quite as extreme as this. They might not be this moment where we hear this audible voice, but, but I do believe that we have moments that are really defining moments, and how we respond in those moments are gonna set our lives in a direction and in a course, one way or the other. So the Bible says that Samuel, uh, after he hears this voice, says he got up and ran to Eli. It makes sense. He said, here I am. Did you call me? Eli kind of rubs his eyes. He's like, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. (laughs) Right? I mean, he wakes him up in the middle of the night. And so that's what Samuel did. He says, all right. Then the Bible says the Lord called again, Samuel. Or it was probably more like Samuel. I mean, that's how God talks, right? (laughs) Maybe he was like, Samuel? I don't know. Who knows? Right? So he says, it was probably in Hebrew. Shemuel. That's probably what it was. Okay. So so he, he says, okay. Now, Again, Samuel got up and went to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? He was like, I didn't call you, my son. I didn't call you, Eli said. He says, go back to bed. He's like, go. I didn't. It wasn't me, right? So Eli's still kind of getting the sleep out of his eyes. You know that nasty, crusty stuff you get? No really good sleep. You got to wipe out. Don't act like you don't get it. <laughs> guys are like, take him back, right? All right, so then it says, he goes on that Samuel did not what's happening here is is there's this explanation that Samuel didn't yet know the Lord because he had never had a message from the Lord before so he's not used to hearing God he's not used to understanding what God's voice sounds like he didn't know what was going on here we get a little hint at it so the Bible says that the Lord called a third time and once more Samuel got up and went to Eli and I just love Samuel's response all three times here I am here I am did you call me and like by now, I think Samuel's like losing his mind. It's like, what's going on? And he's missing the significance of the moment. Like Samuel is missing out on, on what's happening. He's not understanding it. The Bible's laying it out for us. And, and, I, and I love it that finally the Bible says that Eli realized it was the Lord. F- finally, Eli, the chief priest, he realized after the third time that the Lord was calling the boy. And so Eli says to Samuel, this is so great. He says, go and lie down again. And if someone calls again, say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. In other words, say hello. (laughs) Say hello. He says, so Samuel went back to bed, and the Lord came and called again as before to Samuel. Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel replied, speak, your servant is listening. And as the story goes on and finishes out, God kind of reveals to Samuel this incredible plan that he has. And it's a tough plan because a plan that is the removal of Eli's Uh, family from leadership and Samuel uh, has to stand before Eli and tell him everything that God says but 
Eli says, hey, if you don't tell me, you know, God's going to get you kind of deal. And so Samuel tells him everything. And, and it marks this beginning of this heroic life where Samuel just puts himself in a posture that says, I'm here. Speak. Your servant is listening. I'm not too busy for you, Lord. I, I get it. You're speaking to me now. And it's this powerful, like, way for us to look at. I believe God is saying to us, hey, hello. Hello out there, Ryan. Are you listening? Are you listening, Samantha? And I think that God still calls to us. Have you ever been in a room where somebody has the same phone as you? And it rings, and you're like, is that you or me? Have you ever done that? You ever been like in a situation where the, the phone rings out or it's like it chirps and both of you look at your text messages and it's not you and it's the other person. You're like, oh yeah, nobody likes me, you know, to put that away. Is it you or me? Because we all get those calls, you know. See, God's calling all of us. He really is. He's calling every single person in here to live this heroic life. First Corinthians is a letter that Paul wrote to a church that he started in a town called Corinth. And this is what he says in, in the very first chapter of the first letter they wrote. He says, but to those called by God to salvation. A key word there is called. Called by God to salvation. What salvation means, you know, if you might be new uh, to this idea of faith, salvation just simply means those called to be rescued by God through the cross. That God has called out to everyone and says, I can bring you forgiveness. I have made a way for you to be right with me to find forgiveness for the things that you have done wrong, the things that separate you from the perfect God, and it's in Jesus Christ. And, and, and Paul says, to those God called to salvation, both Jews and Gentiles, in other words, everybody, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. In other words, Jesus, through him, is calling every one of us out. He's calling every one of us out to live this different life, and it's Christ who does it. So that voice that Samuel heard years and years and years and years before this verse was ever written, we hear that same voice, but it's in the person of Jesus Christ. This person who promises life, who promises forgiveness, who promises eternity with God, who promises a place where there's no more pain and no more hurt and no more sorrow, who promises peace when we walk through the storms of this life. This person, his, he calls out to us. And he's setting the call, will you kind of live out? Will you be different? And Paul had his own kind of unique experience in the book of Acts. Luke is writing about uh, different experiences that Paul had. And, and he has Paul kind of talking to this leader. And, and he's explaining the, the, the defining moment in his life. And in this moment, he tells this leader who it, what it is that God has called him to do. Right? And so in Acts chapter 26, verse 18, this is what Paul says. Right? Paul says, God has called me to open their eyes. So they might turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God. And then he goes on and he says, not only that, but then they will receive forgiveness for their sins and be given a place among God's people who are, what does it say there? Set apart by faith in me. Set apart. See, this call is this call for every one of us to live differently. It's this call for every one of us to have a different set of ideals, a different set of morals, a different set of values, a different way to, to speak, a different way to talk, a different way to engage with our world. And see, every hero has this moment. There have been some really interesting books written about the pattern of a hero. And all of these studies that show these great stories that we love, that are just a part of who we are, in every one of those hero stories, there's this moment where a hero is faced with the opportunity to answer the call and to live set apart, different from the normal world. Just think about your favorite hero. Think about a, a book that you love that has the, the, all the elements of a heroic story. There's always a point in time where that hero has to face a choice. Do I live outside of the normal world or do I live inside the normal world? And they, they have to answer that call. And if they don't answer that call to live outside the normal world, then they're never gonna reach their status of hero. They're never gonna get to that goal. And it's the same way for every person in this world. Every person in this room, God is calling you today to live heroically. He's wanting to set you apart. And see, that's really what Christianity is about. See, Christianity is a call out from the normal world it's a call to live this life that's different that's set apart 
It's not called to just simply, hey, Christianity isn't something you just add to your plate. Well, yep, I'm a Christian, and I'm also an Elks member, and I'm Rotary, and uh, yeah, so I'm just involved with all these services. There's nothing wrong with those things, but Christianity is more than that. Christianity isn't like, well, I take gymnastics, I go to church, you know, I mean, that's not how this works. I mean, this is so fundamental and so shifting of who we are. Everything becomes heroic when we say, okay, I'm being called and I'm being set apart from this world to live differently. Now, differently doesn't mean weird, okay? I mean, differently doesn't mean everywhere I go, I have to like, you know, people have to like, oh, there's a Christian, look how strange he is. No, that's not it. But it's that we're making choices to live differently, to to live for justice. We're making the, the choice to live like a hero would for others, to sacrifice, all these great things. That's actually what this whole series is about. What are those heroic qualities? But we can't get to the heroic qualities until we take this moment and say, am I really willing and committed to living this life that's set apart? If I want to be heroic, if I I want my life to count, if I really want to say, you know what, When, when my days on earth are done, did my life count for something beyond me? When we start in this moment, we think, hey, I want that. We have to come to the place where Samuel was, and he said, Lord, speak. Your servant is listening. That same posture of, here I am. And we have to commit to living this heroic life and and commit to saying, I'm not going to live for myself, but I'm going to live in a manner that is pleasing and worthy, the Bible says, of the call that Christ has given to us. Every series, we have an anchor verse. Our anchor verse for this series is found in a book called Ephesians. If you're new to Bible study, Ephesians is another book that was written by Paul to a group in Ephesus. And in Ephesians chapter 4, it's in the New Testament, Paul says this. This is a really great verse. It says, therefore, I, a prisoner for serving the Lord. Remember, he's in prison writing this letter. I beg you. I beg you to lead a life worthy of your, what's the word? Calling, for you have been called by God. See, the bat phone is ringing in our lives. And the, the question is, are we there to pick up? Are we there to answer? Because heroic behavior begins by answering the call. As we launch this series, that's the big question today. For every one of us in here, whether you've never thought about faith in God, whether you're just trying to figure it out, whether you came here uh, today, your first time, whether you've been here a few times, this is a moment where every one of us has to ask ourselves this question. What is gonna be fundamental to my life? Is it gonna be my job? Is it gonna be my hobbies? Or is it gonna be my Lord? Is it going to be my understanding of God and what he wants for my life and for this world and this planet? And true heroic behavior begins by answering the call. Until we answer that call, we can't move forward. We can't ever reach the potential that God has for us. But the call is being made out. That's what's so mind-blowing. You're being called. I'm being called. It has nothing to do with what we've done. It's God at work in us. Every person in here, your potential is unbelievable because it's grace that takes a hold of our hearts and our lives and motivates us and moves us to live heroically has nothing to do with anything you could ever do on your own and so here's the question for every one of us today what are you being called to do today what am i being called to today not necessarily to do but what are you being called to today when it comes to the voice of god you're here this morning and god's saying to you Jim, Jennifer, Bonnie, Heather, Tom, what are you being called to? If you say, Lord, speak, what do you think he's calling you to? Is he calling you to explore faith in him? Are you at a point in your journey of faith where it's like, okay, I'm here I'm ready to commit to exploring and figuring out God. I've been trying to do it on my own. I don't know. And, and, and I, I, I think I need to figure this thing out. Maybe you're here today and, and you know that God is calling you to commit. You know that God is calling you to surrender your life. And you're at this point and place in your heart where it's like, I know that I need the forgiveness of God. I know that I want my life to be heroic. And so today I want to say, Father, forgive me come into my life, change my life. I want to live for you. I don't want to live for me anymore. I want to grow in this relationship with you. And you'd say, you know what? I want to become marked by the grace of God. I want to become that that follower of Christ who changes the world. 
Or maybe you're here today and you are a follower of Christ, but the reality is you've been living kind of a lukewarm, in and out, yeah, go to church when it's convenient, and you know, as long as the person who I like is leading worship, or the person who I like is speaking, I'll go, and I might give every now and then, I'm certainly not going to tithe, and you know, I'm never going to join a small group, because that's just weird, you know, and, and maybe God's saying to you, hey, you know what, it's time for you to commit. It's time for you to put all the chips in, be all in, to go all in for him. And see, God just wants us to be moving forward, and I'm not sure where you are in that kind of spectrum or what it is that God's speaking to your heart today, but this I know for sure. God is speaking to every heart in here. God's speaking to every heart in here, and it's our responsibility to have that posture that Samuel had of here am I. To have that posture of, Lord, take my life. Use me. And when we get to that position, when we get to that posture, it's amazing what God will call us to. It's amazing what God has in store for us if we will just come and simply humble ourselves and say, God, whatever you want, whatever it is that you need from me, whatever it is that I can be for you, I'm here and I'm ready for it. See, that's where this heroic life begins. And so as we launch this series, I've asked Doug to come and lead us in a song of reflection. And whether this is your first time here or whether you have come to this church for 20 years, I want to give you an opportunity this morning to just sit and reflect on what the next six weeks are going to mean for you. What is it that God wants to do in your life? If you're here this morning and you'd say, you know what, I believe God wants me to commit my life to him. I've never surrendered my life to him, but I know in my heart, I don't have all the answers, but I know that I need forgiveness. Then I want to encourage you during this time to just for the first time in your life, say, God, forgive me. Forgive me. Lord, I need your help. I want to follow you. The Bible says if we confess with our mouths and believe in our hearts, then we're saved, which just simply means rescued from ourselves, (laughs) rescued from our sins. And we're made right with God through the work of Christ and it's just a matter of faith and if you're here and you're a follower of Christ you're a Christian but it's just you know there's areas in your life that God is saying are you committing those to me are you surrendering those to me is your posture in those areas well you can have this area God but not this area I want to encourage you to make this a moment where you just surrender that and say I want to answer the call because I want my life to be heroic So you can sing along, you can pray, you can close your eyes, you can listen to the words, whatever you feel comfortable doing, but just let this be a moment where God speaks to your heart. Let's pray together. Lord, in the stillness and the quietness, just like Samuel that night, We say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So, Lord, for those who are here who just feel as if you're calling them to explore who you are, I pray that, God, they would find that space here at Curtis Lake Church. God, for those who today answered your call for the very first time and invited you into their life, I pray that they would have an assurance that you are their God and that you have forgiven them and that they are walking with you pray, God, that you'd provide someone in their heart and their life to just come alongside of them, to encourage them and walk with them, Lord. Help us to be a church, God, that can be a place where we can all grow, Lord, especially those who are coming to you and coming to faith in you, Lord. And Lord, I pray for those in the room, God, who church is a normal part of their life, and today you're calling them to a greater, a deeper sense of commitment to you to living out these things that we're going to talk about so that we can truly make a difference, Father, in other people's lives, that we can live heroically. So as we all come together from different walks of life, with different backgrounds, different hurts and different pains, Lord, I pray that we would come as one group of people surrendered to you. God, that you would help us, Lord, that your grace would empower us, that your love would inspire us. We thank you for all those things in Jesus' name, amen.